Hi guys, Jamie here from JB Motion. Today we're going to be creating this really cool looking still image. It's basically the number eight on its side and there's a kind of a tadpole that's going around it with a cool light attached to the head of the tadpole. So we're going to be setting this up using a tracer object in Cinema 4D and we're going to be pr prettying it up in Photoshop. Now this is going to be set up as an animation. I'm only rendering out a, PNG, a single PNG image, but you guys are welcome to render it out as a PNG sequence and create an animation out of it. So let's get started on this. Here we go. Okay guys, so first of all, we're going to create our eight shape. So to do that, we're going to grab a text object and we're going to just type in 8 here into the text field and hit tab and then for font um, you can pick pretty much any font you want for this as long as there's going to be nice big gaps for our um, light tadpole I'm going to call it a light tadpole to pass through so for this I'm going for Ubuntu Mono or Ubuntu mono or however you pronounce that one and I am going to make sure that this is aligned to the middle and I'm going to hit R on my keyboard and I'm going to rotate this to 90 degrees and E then to use my move tool I'm going to just bring this up and roughly center it in my world okay so next I want to, with my text object selected, hold down Alt and then go up here and we're going to select Extrude. Holding down Alt will automatically make the extrude apparent of the selected object there. So in this case it's the text. Let's let go on that. I'm going to bring the movement here um, up to from 20. I'm going to go to about 30 on that maybe 25 and for caps excuse me we're going to go to fillet cap on that and the same for the end fillet cap also cool and I want to click on the constrain tick box here and let's reduce the radius to about four on the end here and the same on the start so that's looking pretty good okay so next we're going to create our path that our light tadpole is going to travel along so I'm going to middle mouse click to go into my top view middle mouse click again I'm going to zoom in here I'm going to grab my pen tool, no, my act actually I'm going to grab my spline arc tool and I am going to start drawing here. Now the spline arc tool works in this way. If I click, nothing's happening. But if I hold down click and drag ever so slightly, or a lot, but we're going to do it slightly, it's going to work. So you can see there, let's go back into our perspective. So this is where I've started and I'm going to try and get it through here, around, back out here, around again, and it's going to go like that in the shape of an eight also. So back into the top view here. This is going to come through here and it's going to come in here. Now, again, if I click, nothing's going to happen. So you need to, I'm just going to click back onto this point here and go back you need to click and drag ever so slightly to continue the uh, spline and then I'm gonna bring it around here click and drag I'm gonna go all the way around here click and drag again and we're gonna go around again clicking and dragging again and we're gonna go over here Let's undo that. I'm going to go to about here. See, I forgot to click and drag there now. So I'm going to select this point again, 
go around click and drag and then we're just gonna connect that to close our spline cool so let's middle mouse click to jump back in there into our perspective view and select our spline make sure object mode is selected and select the move tool let's bring this up along the y-axis so now you can see that our path is set up so our light tadpole is going to travel in and out following along that spline so I'm just moving it over a little bit to give it a bit more space over here and I'm going to move it up so it's more in the center of our eight. I also want to select all my objects here and let's bring this down to floor level. So let's deselect everything. We'll create a floor and let's grab our eight and let's make sure that this is touching the floor. So I'm just going to bring it down to about there. I'm going to hit R my keyboard to rotate it and we need to bring this one down. So we're just going to rotate it there around the Z axis and hit E on your keyboard, hit W to go into world coordinate system and then just bring that up. So we're going to have to R on that again and try and get this nice and flush with our floor. I'm going to go E and just line that up as best we can. Okay, so that looks like it's touching the floor. Good stuff. Okay, so now that we've put that on the floor, we need to just make sure our spline is uh, centered again in on our eight. So just bring that down a little bit and we can deselect this well we can change it to be object coordinate system change it back again cool okay so now we're going to create a sphere and the sphere is what's going to create our trace lines so create your sphere and for the radius we're going to set this to about two centimeters and we want to right click on the sphere, go to Cinema 4D Tags and go to Align to Spline. Now the spline we're aligning the sphere to is going to be this one. So just drag this down to our spline path field and now our sphere is going to be aligned to that spline. Cool, okay. So we want to animate this so that our sphere is going to go around and around and back again on a loop. So let's just set our frame range to be 300 frames. We're not going to need that many, but we're going to leave ourselves a lot, uh, enough space. And we're going to add a keyframe here. And we're going to go to frame 100. And we're going to add another keyframe, but we're going to set the position to 100% and add a keyframe. So let's watch that back. Okay, so we want to get rid of that ease in, ease out. So let's hit Shift F3 on your keyboard and with these keyframes selected, hit Tab and click this button here and that's going to set up linear interpolation. So there's going to be no easing in and out. So let's play that again. Okay, so we want this to loop. So how we do that is open up our dope sheet again, Shift F3 on your keyboard. And <clears throat> with, with the align to spline object selected here on the dope sheet, go over to your uh, track, to your properties tab, and in the after field, set that to repeat. And for repetitions, you can just type in 50 and that's going to be plenty of repetitions for our frame range so if we hit play on that that will loop over and over again well 50 times so that's pretty good so it's going a bit too fast so i want to grab my keyframe here i'm just going to bring this to frame 200 
and that's going to slow that down so it's not going too fast so we want we want a nice chilled light tadpole we don't want a busy a busy um stressed out light tadpole we want a nice chilled guy so that's uh that's at a pretty good speed so now we're going to create our tracer object so with the sphere selected go to MoGraph and click on tracer now if we hit play on that you can see that our tracer is tracing all of the vertices of our sphere you can see that our sphere has 24 segments so we are getting a lot of trace lines there but we don't want a lot we just want one so set the trace vertices here just untick that now if we hit let's get rid of our spline as well not get rid of it just hide it off by holding down alt clicking on these traffic lights uh, they're not really called traffic lights so don't quote me on that that's what i call them click on those twice they'll turn red and your spline will be invisible um so if we hit play on that now you can see that our tracer is working its magic it's tracing in a line and now we can use a sweep object to create some geometry along that line so once you've added a sweep object to your object manager we're going to create a circle spline and we're going to set that to a radius the same as our sphere which is two centimeters so set your circle spline to two centimeters and we're going to add, make that a child of the sweep object and we're going to do the same with the tracer object make it a child of the sweep and we want to make sure that the tracer comes after the circle because we want to sweep this circle along this tracer and that's given us our geometry so we want to create we want to make our tracer have a tail and it's going to follow the um, sphere along we don't want this geometry to just be drawn in like drawn on a piece of paper so to do that we want to go to our tracer object and go to limit set that to from end and set the amount to about 30 on that now you can see we have a tail and it's going to follow along so if you want to increase the length of that tail you can just increase this amount here so if we go 60 on that now we're going to have a much longer tail so it's up to you how long you want your tadpole light tail to be i'm going to go back to 30 on my one and also i want to make the end of the tail thinner so to do that i'm going to go to my sweep object and go to the object tab and in the details um li this little triangle here if you click on that you'll get this graph and you can just drag this point all the way down to the bottom and that's going to make the tail of your light tadpole really thin but the top is going to remain um, nice and fat. Okay, cool. Uh, another thing I want to do is I want to kind of create... So I want to get rid of the sphere uh, or make it invisible. So again, hold down Alt and click on these traffic lights here two times. That will make your sphere invisible. And I want to create a kind of a mushroom shape here at the end of my... Or at the front of my tadpole so to do that go into your sweep object and in the scale graph we're just going to hold down control and cr click on the line here and that'll create another point so if we bring that down we want to basically start off skinny get bigger and bigger as we go up and then there's going to be a stop here and it's going to get really big like kind of like a mushroom or a flower so let's bring that down and let's select this point and we can grab this um, I forgot the name of this this black triangle here and just drag that out we're gonna try and make the shape as best we can and if we bring that in and bring this and also I want to increase the width here at the end so 
select this point here and let's bring this up. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. Okay, cool. So I want to just try and see where it kind of changes direction here. I want to bring that kind of closer to the end. So we're just dragging it out. So it's kind of going up like this. And then when it gets very close to the end, it pops up. Okay, cool. So let's... Uh, Hit play on that, and that's looking pretty good. Okay. Now, next, I'm just going to increase the actual width here of this. So the overall width I want to increase. So I'm going to click on the circle spline and bring the radius up to 3 on that. Very nice. And if I hit play, yeah. Okay, so that's looking better. Now, next we're going to create our light, because our light tadpole won't be much of a light tadpole unless it has a light. So let's create our light. Let's click to add a light object. And we want to bring this light to the front of our tadpole here. So we could drag it around or up and down and find the front. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the light a child of this sphere which is hidden at the moment and now I can use my reset PSR and that will align the light to this sphere now if you can't see this hit shift C in your keyboard and then just type in PSR and you can double click on that and that will align the light to the front of the tadpole now let's bring the light object up to the top so it's no longer a child of the sphere and if we zoom in on the light, we can see that it's a bit too close to our tadpole head here. So we want to, first of all, we want to give it the same align to spline tag as our sphere. So just hold control and drag that up. Now our light is going to be aligned to this spline, just like our... Um, sphere is so if i hit play there you can see that our lights follow along but we don't want it to be too close to our tadpole top there so we want to hit shift f3 in your keyboard and we're going to decrease the amount of time it takes for our light align to spline tag to complete one full loop so to do that we can just drag it to reduce the amount of time it takes. That doesn't seem to be doing anything there. Maybe it's because I have the wrong one selected. This is the align to spline tag that's added on to the light. So with this one selected, let's drag it back here. And now you can see that that's affecting the position of our light. So we just need to go back one frame on that, maybe two. We can go for... We'll go for two for now, and if we can change that back if we need to. So let's uh, have a look at what this is looking like. So I'm just going to go Alt-R to open up my interactive render region. I'm going to drag this out and bring the quality up to the max on that. Cool. Okay. So it's not looking like very much right now. So what we want to do first of all is we want to make our light visible. So if we click on the light object here and go to general and let's go to visible light and set that to volumetric. Now we can see that our light is actually visible. So it's very, um, it's basically washing out our entire scene. So let's go into visibility and let's set the outer distance to be about 40 centimeters. So that's looking much better already. And we can also, let's see, if we hit play here, 
and stop that. You can see that we're getting some weird artifacts here, like these lines that it's not looking great altogether. So to fix that, we need to go into, into our visibility tab and we're going to change the sample distance. So the more we reduce this, the better result we're going to get. I'm going to set it to three centimeters and that's going to get rid of our weirdness there. Um, those lines are gone. Now we also want to, we want to create a lens effect. So with your light selected, go into the lens tab and set the glow to zoom. Now there are loads of these different ones that you can try out. Maybe you'll find one that you prefer, but I'm going to go for zoom on, on this tutorial. So that's given us these beams and what we can do is we can edit the look of this lens effect if we click on this button here and this is going to give us control over the size of the glow so I'm going to bring that down to about 15 actually I'm going to bring it down even further to about 7 and we can control the size of the ring I'm going to leave it at 10% by ring it's this ring here and the beams we also have control over the beams so I'm going to leave those as they are. You can control the amount of beams here. I'm going to leave that back to four. So you have all these controls. So you can do really cool things with these uh, with this glow editor. So just click on OK there and let's see what that's done for us. OK, so I want to reduce the size of the glow even further. So I'm going to go into edit, set this to three, hit OK. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, so let's hit play on that. Now you can see that our lens effect has disappeared. So that is because our object is blocking it. But we don't want our lens effect to disappear if it's being blocked by an object. So to prevent that from happening in the lens, of, in the lens tab, just um, untick this fade if behind object box. And now we're going to prevent that from happening. Um, in the general tab, I want to warm up this light a bit, so just drag the color to kind of a very light yellowish color. Yeah, like that. And also, go back into the lens tab, and I want to turn on reflexes. Now, reflexes are... I'm not going to explain what they are, I'm just going to show you. I'm going to set this to flashlight 3. Again, there are many of these, so you can have a browse through which ones you prefer and if I turn that on you can see what that's doing it's giving us this cool kind of um, uh, camera effect camera light playing with camera effect yeah really really good job of explaining what that is there but you get the picture um, and also you can edit your reflexes here so you have all these options to edit that but I'm happy enough with how that looks now I'm going to create a material for our sweep object, not for our sweep object, sorry, for our extrude. And our extrude is what is creating this 8 shape. So I'm just going to call that 8. And I'm going to create a new material. And I'm going to open it up. It is going to be transparent. I'm going to set the refraction preset to glass. And I'm going to add that to the extrude object. Okay. Let's turn on ambient occlusion just to get our contact shadows rocking. That's going to make an, a big difference. So you can see we get our contact shadows now. I'm actually going to turn it off because it's going to reduce render time. I'm going to turn it on at the very end. Um, and next we want to, let's see, we want to turn on caustics next. So caustics is basically going to give us some really cool um, glows on our floor. Let's create a material for our floor. And let's just, it's just the default white material is all we need. I'm going to add that to the floor object. Okay. And also we're going to turn on the shadow of our light. So if we go to our light, 
go into shadow, the shadow tab and set the shadow to area. Now our shadow is going to be, our light is going to be producing shadows. It's going to be looking even more realistic. So let's uh, get an idea of that. Okay, so it doesn't seem to be producing any shadows for some reason. Um, let's see if we bring it out here a bit more. Okay, so we'll come back to that in a minute. For some reason, we're not getting any shadows. It could be the way the light's positioned, um, but we'll come back to that in a minute. So we're going to create caustics for our light. So let's go into our light object, go to the caustics tab, and turn on surface caustics. Let's set the photons to, well, let's see what, I'm just going to turn off my interactive render region. We'll get more accurate um, results using the render view. And I'm going to turn back on ambient occlusion because that's going to make up for our lack of shadows. I don't know why we're not getting any shadows on our light. Must be something that I'm overlooking for the time being. So let's just do a render preview on this. And see what it's looking like. Okay, so we're not getting any caustics because we didn't turn it on in the render settings. So go into edit render settings and go to effect and turn on caustics. Now let's do a render preview of that again. Now you're going to see we're getting this cool caustics effect. So as it is now, it's not looking too bad, but it could look better if we go into our light object and if we go to caustics and let's increase the photons to about 60,000. Now if we do a render preview on that, it's going to take us a bit longer, but as we're going for a still image, we can afford to put our options up as nice and high. Now, if this is going to be an animation, I mean, you'd probably lower the photons, compromise as best you can. Um, but yeah, that's looking pretty good. Okay, so I'm going to create a material for our tadpole stem here. So it's going to be a duplicate of this glass material. So I'm going to hold down control and drag. The only difference is if I open it up, so I'm just going to rename it here to tadpole. And I'm going to open it up. And in the transparency channel here, I want to set the color to be a nice bright orange. Out there so it's uh, 42 on the hue and then 100 on the saturation and the same below also so let's bring that over to our sweep object let's do a render preview on that So now you can see that our caustics is also creating a nice orange glow over here in the background. So that's looking pretty cool. Um, what we can do is go into our render settings and turn on anti-aliasing. Set that to one by one. We'll set it to two by two for now. I'm actually going to bring that up when we actually render this out properly but just for this render preview I'm going to set it low just so we're not it's not going to take ages to render so I'm just going to pause the video here guys and then we'll come back when this is finished okay so I think our lights a bit too bright so I want to go into light here and I'm going to go into the general tab set the intensity to about 60% do another render on that. I'm going to again pause the video and then we'll come back when this is finished rendering. Okay, so you can see that we're getting shadows now. 
um, and I think the problem was that our light was too intense, so it was just basically um, washing out everything, and there were no visible shadows. So yeah, turning down the intensity gave us our shadows back. So right now our light is too far away from our tadpole head, so we did say we would actually bring this back if we needed to. So hit shift it shift F3 in your keyboard and with your uh, align to spline the one that is attached to your light with that one selected in the timeline let's just drag this up so that so that it's just one frame behind the spheres align to spline now if we render that out let's actually just hit play here and just give our tadpole or our light tadpole a different position uh, bring it to about there and let's do a render preview on that okay so we're getting close to something pretty cool here um, a few last changes I want to make is I want to go into my 8 extrude object here and set the uh, depth to be 20 and I also want to rotate the camera because I want to have the I want to have the um, smaller circle here kind of further away from me and the larger circle closer to me if that makes any sense and now no reason really I just just giving it a go see what it looks like and we will try and find a nice spot to pause this at I'm going to pause it there. I'm going to try and get a nice camera position on this as well. And I'm going to do a render preview again. So, not entirely happy with that. I'm going to hold Control Shift and press Z a few times to bring my camera back to where it was before I rotated around. So, I'm going to leave it at this orientation. And I'm going to go and do one more render preview on this, guys, because I don't want to uh, keep messing around with this. Now, you guys are welcome to mess around with it uh, for as long as you want, but uh, I don't want this tutorial to go on much longer. So I'm going to find a nice spot to pause this at. Pause it right there. Okay. So, hopefully, I'm happy with this render. And if I am not, it will have to do. Um, what I am going to do after this render preview is finished is I'm going to crank up the anti alias scene to uh, one by one and four by four. Oh, I am liking this actually, so that's good. Um, one thing I want to do is to get rid of this graininess. I'm going to set, I'm going to do something with the light here really quick. But yeah, I'm liking the look of that actually. I'm going to go with that. So that's frame 154. So I'm just going to go into my light. And if I go into shadow bring the minimum samples up to 25 and the maximum up to 200 now this is going to take a lot longer to render because I just made those changes I wouldn't say a lot longer but it's it is going to take longer and um, what other, what other change did I say I was going to make I said I was going to make another change but I've forgotten oh yeah anti-aliasing I'm going to crank that up from it's now set at one by one, two by two. I'm going to set it one by one, four by four. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. Mm, you guys might actually hit the play button there and find a better spot for your light tadpole because I'm still unhappy with mine. Um, I might just bring it around there. I'm so in, un, uh, I'm unable to stop fiddling once I get started. Okay, so I'm going to leave it at that. And I'm going to go to render settings and output set to 1920 by 1080. 
and current frame is the one we want to render and anti-aliasing we're going to go for one by one for the min and four by four for the max i'm going to save this as a png to to my desktop i'm going to call it tadpole light and then I'm just going to click on the uh, render to picture viewer here. It's going to render out. So as you can see, I was actually working on one earlier and I thought this one turned out really cool. Um, I brought it into Photoshop and uh, oh, okay, well, it's not there anymore. But anyway, what we're going to do is once this one here is finished rendering, um, I'm going to bring it into Photoshop and we're going to make some changes. So you can see from my actual first one that I did a much better job because I'm not trying to rush. I actually spent a good um, hour to an hour and a half perfecting this. But when I'm doing a tutorial, I'm kind of trying to get it uh, you know, done as quickly as possible so I'm not boring you guys so this one isn't as good as the one I did previous but you know it just comes to messing around with the settings like maybe messing around with the intensity of the light maybe increasing the number of photons in the caustics tab in the light um, all these different properties can just and it just comes to tweaking stuff and um, it's actually it actually gets addictive tweaking properties so be careful with that so that's almost done and even the fact that my light is like too far away from my um from my tadpole head i'd actually want to increase the um the visibility of that just to get rid of that because that's just annoying me so i am going to do that i'm going to pause the video here and i'm going to do that right now well, I'm going to pause the video after I make the change. I'm going to go into my light and I'm going to go to visibility. I want to increase the outer distance here to about, what do we have it at? So I'm going to go for 47 and I'm going to just render this again. And I'm going to hope that that solved that problem so I'm pausing the video now guys when this is rendered we'll bring it into Photoshop just to pretty it up a little bit more and then we're gonna call it quits in this tutorial it's a little bit better I need to increase that um, that uh, what's it called again outer distance um, but as I said I'm not gonna do that because this is getting ridiculous now so just jumping into Photoshop and I want to find where did I save that to maybe I didn't actually save it so I'm gonna go file save as save it as a PNG click OK set this to my desktop oh, okay it was there sorry excuse me so back into Photoshop and I'm just gonna drag this image that I rendered out into Photoshop now control zero to zoom in there and i'm going to just turn off this padlock here and i'm going to go to first of all i want to go to image set the auto tone and auto contrast and auto color i'm going to undo auto color and i'm going to redo auto color you know i'm going to leave it on and i'm going to trust photoshop Go back to back to the image here and I'm going to go to levels and we're going to go for increase contrast to mm, maybe mid tones darker. Increase contrast one I'm going to go for and I'm going to click on the curves here. And I'm going to go for linear contrast. Okay. And finally, I want to increase the vibrance. So click on vibrance. I'm going to 
bring that up. Okay, so let's crop this so that it's more centered. And okay, guys, so that is it for this tutorial. That's not looking too bad, to be fair. Um, hope you guys learned a lot. And uh, as always, I'll see you in the next video.